Footy season's greetings, team. It's Thirsty Thursday. So, two weeks left. Two weeks left of the season. Yeah, looks like we made it. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. Some uh, of them said it shouldn't be yeah, done. Yeah, it shouldn't be done. Um, four teams left, uh, 10 days before the, the biggest weekend in Australian sport. Yeah, like ever. I'm excited. So much I'm excited. Get your brain points in right now. Yeah. Um, huge guest, who we got today? We've got Lottie Takeri. Oh, I can't wait it. to talk to him. Multiple Premiership winner, State of Origin, Wallaby. 2006 Commonwealth Games. Representative. Representative, I was going to say medalist, I don't know if you did or not, but not. it'll be good, it'll be good. <laughs> so we're going to get Lottie on, uh, we're going to drink a delicious beer mm. from uh, the Blue Mountains, yeah. which I would like to introduce you to, and then uh, we'll go from there. Let's play. Let's crack into it. <laughs> oh, he's having trouble. There Mountain we go. culture. Mountain culture. Katoomba. Yeah. Status quo. Locals call it Katoomba. 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 New England oh, Pale Ale. It's oh, in. It is a it tiny little uh, brewery that do really short runs. Hmm. Um, and if you look on their Instagram, it looks like they have a spa on their back deck. But apparently, that's how they do some of their beers. So I, rock, I rocked up there last weekend thinking there was going to be a spa and beer. That's Full speedos. Like, yeah. Well, I need to go for a swim. A dip. That's um, good. Fun that's fact good. about the brewery as oh, well. Oh, talk to me. The, the building that it's in. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, this is some, I think you know, over a hundred years ago, is it used to be oh, wow. the, the local newspaper. Okay. And then it turned into a, what they call a dancing saloon. Yeah, right. Down and out trunks. Like a strip club. It sounds like it. I like a strip club. My okay. kind of spot. Yeah, good, good deep dive into historic <laughs> Katoomba. I can smell this already and, mm. it's good. Ooh, more nice. tropical than the Hawaiian ukulele orchestra. I can agree with that. Good, I like that. I don't know too much about the Hawaiian ukulele orchestra, but you can I believe that. I uh, believe that. So action, 1.6, and that's so 5.6% uh, ABV. That is a delicious beer. Mm. Um, I would, how many beers have we had? Uh, at yeah. least 12. At least 12? Yeah. I would say top two. Top two? Top two. Right after One Drops, uh, remind me. Uh, that was their Rev Up? Rev Back? So whatever it was. That was also an England IPA, I believe. Yeah. Um, that is delicious. And I don't know, a thousand times better than the sour. Um, it's the truth. Can we just delete the sour episode? Yeah, I think we can. <laughs> um, all right, should we talk, talk to Lottie? Get Let's him on the horn? It. Let's go. Woo! Stoked to be joined now by Jewel International, Lottie Takiri. Lottie, mate, we want to get into your rugby league days, but obviously we're just a couple of days on from a massive Wallabies performance as well. Obviously you had some great yeah. moments in, in the Wallabies shirt. Uh, what did you make of that first up Bledisloe Test match on the weekend? Um, I'm buoyed and stoked by how uh, those young young lads fronted up. You know, it's, it's a big ask to go over to New Zealand and. You know, to come away with a draw sensational. I think I've been quoted this week to, that, uh, you know, not to get carried away too much with, with that. And hopefully they can, you know, get to get to Auckland and Eden Park and break that hoodoo this weekend. It'll be massive for them. Everything I've heard from, from most people has just been, this was great. Let's just see what happens at Eden Park. Like, we've, yeah. we've been in this position many yeah. times. Yeah. But yes. A lot of, what is it about Eden? I was like, we know, we know you know, the crowd, the, that incredible history there, but what is it about Eden Park that's just terrifying? The Eden Park factor. You get there, you get, you know, they don't give you the best ground to train on. I remember driving there in, in a few of the different games we played, getting on the bus in the CBD, um, probably in two hours before kickoff. Uh, you know, I think as a crow flies, Eden Park out of the CBD is probably about five or six kilometres, if that. Uh, we would be on the highway and then on the back blocks around um, the Eden Park area, trying to get there still 45 minutes later. Uh, we're supposed to have a, a, a police escort. We'd have an escort, but I don't know what they were there for. <laughs> uh, we'd, we'd be on the left side of the road, I, I kid you not. And then probably 10 minutes later, there's the All Blacks bus going past us um, on the right side of the road with a police escort. So all that sort of stuff factors in, you know, we're thinking, oh, here we go. Seems like uh, like you're describing the bus trip to Eden Park at 
it seems like there's a lot of similarities between uh, between that and the trip for like a New South Wales blue side down Caxton Street yeah. on the way to Suncorp <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Yes, yes. So I think, I don't know if they go down there anymore because it got a bit too heated. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's an experience. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall just to see what was going on um, in that New South Wales bus. But um, it, it's on again, the, the origin again. So I, I actually can't wait. I'm going to go down to uh, Adelaide for that first game. I don't know how Queensland are going to go. Um, but we, we'll, we'll pull something out. We'll play for each other. Uh, but... We're not as stacked, obviously, as, as the New South Wales team. This is this is all just set up for this whole oh Queensland spirit. This oh, I've got no one. This is '95 <laughs> again. Was it not? Yeah, '95. Fatty Vaughton's Vaughton got to come Vaughton's out. Thing. He's got to. Oh, nah, the whole thing's a stitch up. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's a stitch up? Well, I don't know. Benny's the um, you know, he's a master at, at this sort of backs against the wall stuff. Um, you know, having the siege mentality. He's probably doing that with Souths at the moment. Uh, in their in their run to the finals with, with the bunnies, um, he, he loves it. He, he loves. He gets his players all geared up for it. Um, he's got a big job. Um, let's be honest. He's got a big job with the Queensland team. We've we've got n pretty much no backs um, other outside of Daly Cherry Evans and Cameron Munster, who are uh, who is under the uh, injury, who's under an injury cloud at the moment. So. We're going to have to blood some new players. I was part of that brigade in 2001. Uh, I got ushered in when well, I think it was nine or ten debutants. Uh, played at the old Lane Park. And uh, we came out and uh, blew New South Wales off the park. Just with, with you know, that sheer, not hate, but, you know, we, we just wanted to get out there and represent the jersey. We, were, we built it up all week. Um, the surprise in the jerseys and what had gone before us. Uh, and I think Wayne will probably do something similar this week. I'll be surprised if he doesn't have a guy like Choppy, Chris Close, um, in the camp, uh, just sort of firing him up and, and telling them the old war stories about how uh, you know how he was wrong playing in New South Wales and playing at Manly and you know getting seated at the back of the bus. Whether they were true or not, I don't know, but it's all part of the Queensland folklore. Can you win? Do you reckon you can win? Like if you're being honest? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't bet against um, Queensland, even though, you know, what was it, Fatty's team in 95, was it? I can't remember what year it was. Um, team of nobodies, they just got on the back of that. Um, they didn't score too many tries, but they defended their, their asses off. And, and I think you'll probably see uh, that we we'll probably do the same. I don't know where they're going to play most of their players. Uh, they're talking about playing people out of position for New South Wales. They talk about uh, Gutherson maybe being in the centres, I think that's uh, it's probably a good thing for Queensland. Um, he's not, he doesn't play at centre normally. Uh, but you know they haven't picked their team, uh, and Freddie and uh, Freddie says he'll pick on form, um, which is great. But I reckon you've got to play plays in their positions. I, I, I think the New South Wales teams that they're, they're stacked for, for talent, uh, and, and if they're playing blokes out of positions. I think we can probably expose that at different times. Mate, 2014, um, you know, we sometimes forget, because your career went on for so long, that you <laughs> went out as a winner, won the grand final with South. What, what are your memories of that uh, incredible celebration after winning with South in 2014? Oh, that was awesome, mate. I, um, it, it was just a bit of a roller coaster year for me. I started the year, I started in round one against the Chooks. We beat them, I think. Uh, and then um, four rounds in, I'm dropped. I go back to North Sydney Bears to play uh, the New South Wales Cup for about eight or nine weeks, I think it was. Uh, playing in front of maybe 100, 150 people max. Um, and I didn't mind that, you know, I thought if this is the way to go out, it's probably not the best, but I signed up to play and um, that's what I had to do. And uh, I was luckily, uh, lucky enough to get a call back up after one of the boys got injured, so I vowed to myself that I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't let that go if I did get another chance. And uh, you know, luckily got back in and had a bit of a good run going into the finals, and then um, played all finals and come up with a premiership, mate. I, I rate that uh, premiership probably a little bit higher than. You know, they're, they're both the same, but the Broncos, I didn't really have a um, the 2000 premiership. I didn't really have a, 
an appreciation of uh, the team I was in. I was just young, uh, I wouldn't say naive, but I was just playing. I didn't really think too much. I just played. Whereas, you know, you, you have a few years of, of ups and downs in your career uh, and you realise how much a premiership uh, and how much hard work you've got to put into it and luck and everything else comes into it. And so 2014, um, I, I really appreciated uh, doing that and it was, a, it was a, one of the best ways to go out. So I, I really can't complain on, on how, how it all ended for me. So yeah, it sounds like, you know, the Broncos are almost had a culture of winning. Winning you every know, they, two years. Yeah, they'd always won more than they'd lost at that point. Uh, whereas yeah. South, it was, a, it was a drought going back 40 years or yeah. so. Um, so that must have, just to be a part of that must have been pretty amazing too. Oh, I mate, mean, it was awesome, man. I mean, you know, we, we, I'd stayed in my, um, you know, a couple of boys talk about the other boys, um, the Roosters boys staying in their kit. I stayed in my kit probably for about 24 hours. I went back to South Juniors at, um, Maruba Junction there or, or whatever it was and then it was a great night, great night. Um, after the game we went on out onto the field and had a beer while the lights were off. Uh, great week. Kathy Freeman coming in to talk about uh, being, you know, coping with the pressure uh, and being front runners um, and doing that and, and talk, spoke about her story. Um, Clive Churchill's uh, widow, she came in as well to present the jerseys. So it was a special week. It was a special week, and um, you know, our memories I'll, I'll have forever. Uh, and and, and it, the great thing was, I, I got to have my two oldest boys walk around with me uh, and do that, you know, lap of honour, um, taking that trophy around. The memories they'll uh, take, hopefully, uh, forever as well. You know, I played in a heap of teams, but. Uh, they they say that the team they support are the, are the bunnies. So I played there one year and uh, they're bunny supporters. How early on did you know about Sam's face being busted? Uh, yeah, it was pretty early. I, I don't I didn't realise the extent of it till half time. I knew uh, when he got hit because I'm on, I'm on the I'm on the right wing. He caught on the left first hit up, as you know. And then he sort of, he hit up and bang, and he sort of felt it. I and mean, I've sort of gone over there and thought, yeah, mate, you're right, you're right. And I knew something was up uh, because it was just sunken. I was like, wow, okay. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of didn't say too much. Um, and I didn't say too much within the, the side as well in the team. And Sam did not, they didn't let on too much. Um, I actually did see him going, yeah, it's gone, it's gone to, uh, our trainer Kurt Wrigley, um, but he, you know, he's a, one of the toughest blokes I've played with. Obviously, as a former Bronco premiership winner of the Broncos, what was it sort of like watching them them this season? Because we, you know, we spoke to Gerald Yaoyi a few weeks ago, said it was pretty tough, yeah. and Chris Walker said the same thing. What's it been like yeah. for you this year? Oh, mate, it's um, yeah, it was a massive fall from grace for a club that uh, that demands a lot of success from not only its, its supporters, but its sponsors. It's a big club, um, if not the biggest club in the NRL. Uh, and it was just really disappointing to see the way that um, it just sort of kept going, you know, nosediving. The season just kept getting worse. I was just waiting for something to sort of, I was just waiting for it to stop, but um, it, it never did that. But I, I, I think Kevy's the right job. A right man for the job at the moment. Um, he'll bring a bit of love and culture of the Broncos back into that. You know, he's got he's got Bronco DNA written all over him. Normal Premiership winner. He's got five Premierships um, with the club, uh, and I think he's he's the man for the job. Uh, give him his two years, and then see how uh, you know see how the boys go. But I think he's got he's got the he's got the plays there to get him back in the eight. Um, next year, whether that happens, I don't know. But I think he's he's got the player depth uh, to to do a job for him. Hey, whenever we interview a, a Broncos host, it, it seems like we we always have to ask about Alfie Langer. We've heard some amazing anecdotes about him. What's your favourite Alfie <laughs> Langer story? I don't know. There's so many. 
I, I, I remember Alf one time. He, he <laughs> he's a bull rider. That's all I can say. He turned up. He turned up at uh, at a bull riding contest with just chaps on and got on a bull. I don't know where he got the chaps from. He's he, he's a madman. I love him. Everyone that's played with him loves him. Everyone that knows him, he knows how to have a good time. Um, but yeah, there's some some great stories out there. And how did he go on the ball? <laughs> I think he lasted all of two seconds, but <laughs> the way he got on it, the chaps, they were open back chaps. So all he had was, he had his undies on, he pulled his undies up. Um, well, this was back in the day. So uh, yeah, probably wouldn't be allowed to do that now, but he, he's a madman, I love him. I don't know why that's sounds, just... Sounds sweaty. That's hilarious, but not at all surprising. Like, yeah, of course, Alfie's a bull rider. Of course. Do you, do you uh, Wendell Saylor tells a story that, um, you know, when, when Dell was winning like Dally M, uh, winger of the year a few times, you were just coming on the scene. Alfie would get into his ear every single time everyone went out for a drink. He'd be like, Lottie's coming, mate. He's coming. Like, he's the hot new thing. You're old. You're past it. Yeah, he did. He did. I, I remember, um, yeah, I think Alf, I think Dell was leaving one year or something. Uh, he had contract negotiations and he went over to, to play for Leeds or something. But I, I, I think Alf was in Adela about, mate, you better come back. We've got a hot new young bloke coming through. And I think he came back earlier than he was supposed to, the big Dell. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know whether I put um, any pressure on him, but I, uh, I had a great relationship with Dell uh, and, and all of those blokes. I, you know, I, I, I have to pinch myself at times um, with about how how many blokes, um, how many good footy players I did play with um, that back end of those Broncos blokes, um, and then you know going through the Wallabies and then, and the Tigers with Benji and Robbie Farah and Sam Burgess and even the coaches I sort of had Tim Sheens, Wayne Bennett, Eddie Jones, uh, Craig Bellamy when he was he was assistant up at Brisbane when we were there. So, but I uh, I have to pinch myself at times with. with, with guys I've had experiences with but um, yeah I, I wouldn't take uh, I don't have too many regrets What about a notorious army camp under the tutelage of Wayne Bennett where you half fainted <laughs> Oh my god yeah. So we're um, this is my first pre-season uh, well, it wasn't my first pre-season but in the full time squad in 99 uh, the boys have won 97 Super League 98, they win the NRL. 99, thinking, how good is this? I mean, all these um, legends, watch these blokes. Obviously, the last couple of years take home titles. Trained with them before, but never in, uh, you know, never full time. So I was like, it's the first army camp. The bus dropped us off about five kilometres out of Canungra, where the camp was, so the, the commando camp down there. Didn't know what was going on. I thought, yeah. Dropped us off. I said, uh, you got to jog into camp. I didn't think it was too far. I, I don't know if you've spoken to blokes that I've trained with. I am a terrible trainer. Like my uh, my endurance is terrible. I, I, I can run hundreds and maybe 150 meter sprints all day. But uh, get me on, uh, you know, 1.25, 2K time trial, I'm done. So this is about three, three kilometers in. Well, I'm, I'm at the back, I'm struggling. I'm thinking, what have I got myself in? I'm embarrassing myself. All these blokes are up there, you know, they, and then a couple of blokes at the back trying to usher me along, usher me along. And um, I, find a, I, find a, I find a tree, I find a shady tree, I see it. I cock you out, I'm done, boys, I'm done. <laughs> they all come over. Um, uh, um, the boys say, uh, we'll leave you here. Uh, we'll wait for one of the, the staff to come get you. You know, you sort of walk it in. I was embarrassed, but I was, I was, I was done, boys. It was about 35 degrees, middle of summer. But um, <laughs> so every time, well, I think Gordy tells a story, every year after that, well, every time Gordy went back there, they stopped at the tree. 
um, when they ran in and uh, had 30 seconds of silence for me. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, <laughs> he's a smart-ass Gordy. I know that that's, that's a true story, but that's what he told me. <laughs> Here they, Lottie Takiri. I, I died the first day of the party camp. Uh, Lottie Takiri, mate, thank you so much for joining us. What are, what are your thoughts? Who have we got, yeah. as the, who we got as the Premier this year? Who wins a Premiership? Oh, I'm biased, mate. Oh, I'm going to go with the Bunnies. But if it's not the Bunnies, uh, I think Melbourne. Melbourne looked pretty hard to beat. Um, you know, it's going to be tough. Like, there's two tough games this weekend, isn't there? Um, I, I think if the Bunnies can get there and they can win it, but Melbourne would be hard to beat. I'm sitting on the fence. Mate, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Massive thanks to Lottie Takiri for giving us a few minutes of his time. Absolute legend. I would, I would give a lot to have half of his career. Yeah, good bloke. What, what a good bloke. Good career too. Mm. And thanks to the East Village for housing us every week. Yes. Give us a place to film. And Very much. Drink some beers. It's yep. Great. It's good. Uh, of course, masks are still encouraged for all games. Hope you're masking up. We know we certainly are, as we've been doing. We're going to do our predictions. Yeah. So. Who have you got this weekend in the Mars Life Predictions? Ooh! <laughs> Stonard. Look at that. Storm. I'm a bit flat about this one actually, so I, I do think the Storm will win, yep. but not based off this. Not based on pure purple. Yeah. You want a bit of yellow in there. I just want to live. Point. So that, that's quite good. Uh, Raiders, why the Raiders? Uh, the vibe, always about the vibe. Good, um, like the vibe. You know, when my team's gone, yep. obviously Warriors, so any, it's just about the vibe. So I'm going Raiders Friday. Penrith Panthers Saturday. Okay, good. I can get Vibing. I can get halfway around that. That yep. sounds good. Uh, what have we got? We've got three games of NRL left. Enjoy them while you can. And we'll see you next week. Cheers.